Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch. Today we're talking about an all new game engine. This is called the Range Engine and here it is. And you may be thinking, ha, huh, wait a minute. That looks a whole lot like Blender. Not only that, it looks like an older version of Blender and you are right on both accounts. What Range Engine is all about is basically continuing the legacy of the Blender game engine. Now, if you may not know what the Blender game engine was all about, well, time to get the DeLorean out, hit the 88 miles an hour, and let's do a little bit of time traveling. So back four years ago, the Blender game engine was removed from Blender. It wasn't being used that much. Uh, it wasn't really that core to the Blender's future development. There was a lot going on back in the day, and they ultimately decided that they would remove it. Now, there were actually a decent number of fans of the Blender game engine, uh, enough so that this project started, UPBGE. Now, this is basically a straight out continuation of the Blender game engine. Now, the thing is, Blender has moved on quite a bit since they had a game engine. The, the Blender game engine was in Blender 2.79 point something, and now we're up to Blender 3 point something something. So uh, UPBGE has been keeping up. So if you go over there, check it out. You're going to see here uh, 3.0 is based on the Blender 3.0 sources, while the 3.4 alpha is currently based on Blender 3.4 with all the new updates, the new UI, EV, and all of that new functionality. So if you want to create a game using Blender as it is now, that's great. Now, the legacy version of UPBGE, this was back basically... Blender 2.79.7 was the last release of Blender with the Blender game engine in it, and UPBGE continued a version with it. But this is legacy now. There's not really any updates happening there. And one thing to be aware of, the move to the newer versions of Blender also pushed forward the hardware requirements. You needed a higher version of OpenGL, etc. So if you wanted to have the OG or the original Blender game engine experience, this was really your only option, and this project kind of ended. So now we have this project. This is the range engine. This is basically the Blender game engine taken from history and updated. They're doing new releases and new features and new updates to the existing Blender game engine as it was when it was killed off. Actually, they forked this off of UPBGE uh, 2.5. So uh, they are basically carrying the ball forward. So if you want to stay with the newest version of Blender, the newest game engine, you use UPBGE. If you want to use the legacy way of doing things, but you want updates and new features, well, that's the niche that Range Engine is trying to fit. So let's head on back over to the engine for just a second. Second. And again, this is Blender 2.79. And I got to tell you straight out, you miss the features that have been added to Blender 3.x since. You definitely do. Uh, but you can see here, there's some people that really like the old ways better. And if so, this engine is perfect for you. But you know, who's here, we got a typical world. So I can select things in the world, so my camera, my sculpt, uh, my uh, default cube, and so on. This is full blown Blender. So I could go ahead and I can model my world here. I can add particle effects, various different things. But you're also going to notice there are things that are added specifically specifically for your game. And your game logic can actually be written in a couple of ways. Right down here, you can see an example of writing game logic using Python. So here we can getting the scene, uh, setting keyboard inputs, getting the mouse inputs, and then you've got update, which is basically called every pass through your game loop. So if you want to put your logic here, you can just type it in place here, and you can add these new components onto any object in the scene and control your logic using the Python language. But the majority of the way people do things was actually using something called the logic editor, which is a visual way of scripting. I also got to admit, in the range editor, it is very buggy. I'm having trouble connecting these pins together. So I've already created one, so you don't have to see me stumble with it on, on screen, uh, but what this is basically is how logic is done. So over here, you have sensors. In the middle, you have a controller, which you can think of as a conditional. And then over here, you have an actuator, which you can think of as a verb. So uh, the thing in the world that happened and what happens. You can think of it that way. So for example, here we have a keyboard event. When you hit the right arrow, it goes ahead and moves said object. Now you can notice I have cube selected. So you see cube is the object right here. If I go ahead and select the camera, for example, we can start adding logic to the camera if we wished. Um, but I'm gonna go back to the cube right here. So the same thing, let's let's say we want to, so right here, right arrow, if anything happens, we're gonna go ahead and move things along that axis. So what we're gonna do here, we'll add another example. So we'll do, uh, this is if you press right, let's do one, so if you press left. So you got a number of different options down here, things like joystick, handling, mouse, um, proximity to something else, uh, radar for sensing things in the world, uh, just randomly doing things or always. So basically doing it every single pass through your game loop, for example. And again, I'm just gonna go ahead here and do keyboard, 
and we'll pick the key and we'll do a left arrow and then over here i'm going to add an actuator these are again the things that happen in the world so vibrate or play a sound or steer something in the world change your scene whatever i'm going to pick motion so we'll pick motion over here and then what you got to do is connect this guy to that guy now again this getting that first one to connect there's just something buggy going on for me so if you don't have any issues don't worry about it so automatically it wires up a default controller there are other conditionals here so and or nor uh straight out expressions or you can have a python code evaluate so basically this determines uh when this event happens if this should happen by the logic of the controller here in the middle and now that we've got that in place let's go ahead and set this one up to move minus y on the axis and now you're going to notice there's actually this player integrated in you got some controls over the player right over here and we could just run the engine right inside so they've added some profiling you're going to notice the top left corner uh shows some details of how long various different things are doing and now it'll handle my keyboard movement events so that ladies and gentlemen was how the logic editor worked back in the age of the blender game engine and that's how they continue to work uh both in upbge and now in the range engine and then you can export your game out uh and you can have various different game properties and so on so again you can script with logic editor or you can script with python and that is essentially the, the entire ID behind range engine. So if you'd like the idea of authoring your entire game within one environment, so you create your models, you do your animations, you do your level editing, but also you do your game logic all in one spot, well, that is the idea here. So let's head on back over to the news here. So if you want to check out Range Engine itself, uh, it is available at rangeengine.tech. Now, they've done something with this. I'm not 100% certain I like. Um, they've done uh, patron-based releases. So right now, Range Engine 1.0 was released about three weeks to a month ago. Uh, there is a 1.2 release as well, but that is now only available to patrons. So what you saw in action right there, that was Range Engine 1.0. We'll get to some of the details of what they changed. But the entire idea behind Range Engine basically is, once again, you, you author entirely inside of Blender, and then you add your own game logic in, either using the visual scripting language or using Python, and you can publish it out directly. So um, it's available for download for Windows, both 16 and 32-bit versions, as well as Linux. There is no Mac version available. The source code is also available, uh, but it's basically just a straight-out zip file. There's, there's no actual uh, GitHub repository for this project. So the development is not in the public. I don't think you can make contributions. I, I kind of wish that they would fix that as well. Um, and then we've got release notes. So the key thing about these release notes is these are the things that they've changed since the UPBGE 2.0 five days so if you're wondering exactly or 0 0.25 days so if you're wondering exactly what kind of stuff range engine intends to add to the blender game engine well you're going to be again frozen in time at version blender 2.7 2.79.7, I think it was. So you're not going to get new updates on the Blender side of things, but you're going to get new features in the engine. So for example, we now have new uh, lamp illumination types. Uh, the profiler we saw earlier on is was added in. Uh, layer weights for more complex animations. We've got physics updates for... Uh, Character physics now has smooth movement and jump direction. Uh, text resolution options there, although they will run slower. Uh, physics culling velocity, a new function on object physics. Uh, world scaling objects now influence to object simulation. You can now reorder components. Uh, component header changes, uh, and then they're adding new logic bricks for uh, most side buttons are now available. And there is now a repeat for in delay sensor. So number of times the sensor will repeat before stopping. Um, so those are the kind of additions that they are adding uh, to the Blender game engine. So if you've been sitting there using Blender game engine for years and years and years, and you're just sad that they stopped updating it, well, good news there is new functionality coming to it and then in terms of oops let's head on back over here uh the 1.2 release again this is locked to their patrons only so you're gonna have to have some patience waiting for these to be released to the general public otherwise but you see the kind of things that they've added since then python 3.1 support uh delta time this one is pretty essential this is basically the elapsed time between the current frame and the previous frame uh delta time is very often used for uh smoothing out movements so that things run at the same speed regardless to what uh speed the device they're running on uh, we also got Range Armor, a new exporter that has been integrated into the engine, so you can export your game to different platforms all at once, being Windows and Linux at this point in time. Uh, it is a fork from the BG Armor project, by the way. Uh, we've got the ability to enable, disable Python component execution directly inside of the interface. So if you want to turn things off or on, very simple now. Uh, new mouse look, mouse look method and so on. So these are the kind of things that they are adding. So it is cool to see an old, somewhat 
uh, obsolete engine that has a definite niche fan base continue to get new updates. So again, you do still have the UPBGE project. And if you're all about the idea of using the current version of Blender with new functionality added, UPBGE is the project to go with. But if you like the idea of the Blender game engine just being brought back to life, but new features added to it, that seems to be exactly what Range Engine is going for. Now, to be honest, I was never a huge fan of the Blender game engine. Um, the licensing killed it, in my humble opinion. Uh, it never really took off. It never really targeted mobile platforms, for example, and that became increasingly important. I'd be interested to see if a project like this can build upon that uh, and where things ultimately go. Uh, but I do know uh, that the Blender game engine definitely has its legions of fans, and I think it introduced a lot of people to game programming, so they may be interested in checking out a project such as this. So it is the old school engine that you knew and loved, just with new features and functionality being added. So that is the Range Engine project. Once again, if you're interested in checking it out, it is available at rangeengine.com tech. Um, and again, uh, if you are a supporter of it, you get the newest versions as they're released. I don't know what the time elapse is going to be between uh, the general public getting new updates and otherwise. Uh, it is source available. Again, so if you go to the downloads, the source code is here as a zip, but there is no open source repository, at least not one that I found. Now, one of the things that you're going to like with the range engine is that it's a uh, Definitely got more limited hardware requirements. So if you're on a bit of a potato PC, a potato PC, uh, you might find Range Engine is the right one for you. So let me know what you think. Did you try Blender Game Engine back in the past? Are you using UPBGE now? Do you see any use for Range Engine at all? Or nah, not really. Let me know. Comments down below. I will talk to you all later, and goodbye.